What is a web application? For a long time, web pages and web servers existed largely to deliver static content, and there was a particular pattern to interacting with the website. In the early days, web servers only served static documents, entirely static. And then at some point, the web server started to do some work to dynamically generate the documents. Um, but web applications actually take that evolution even farther to the point where what's running in the browser is entirely an application written in JavaScript. And there's very few page reloads. And the communication patterns between the server are very different. So let me kind of try to show you the differences. Um, this is an example of a web page. It's my group's research web page. Um, and if I go up here, I click on links. So, so let's see what happens here. I go to the page. Um, when I click on a link, watch what happens up in the browser bar. So I click on a link, or actually, sorry, watch what happens right up here. Let me zoom in a little bit. I click on a link, and you can see that the page is being reloaded. So as I click on links, every click here is retrieving a different document from the web server. And if I looked using the inspector, you'd see that it's issuing a get request, and it's getting a new web page back. And this is how you navigate my website. This is how it works. And it's fine. It works fine. But this is not a web application. It doesn't need to be a web application. Uh, this is sort of just an example of a, a fairly typical website. I like it. I think it's very well designed and beautiful. But anyway, um, but you know, this is sort of for a long time. This is how we interacted with the web. You click on a link that generates a request made by the web by your web browser to the web server for a new HTML document, which is returned and rendered. So this is how things worked. And you can see what's going on up here. The browser bar is spinning because the browser is waiting for a new HTML page to render. Let's use a different example. Let's go to music.google.com. So this is my Google Play Music library. Now, what's happening? You can notice when I go there uh, a couple of things. So first of all, let me, let me do a hard refresh. Um, it's taking a while to load, and it's got this weird progress bar going on here while I'm waiting. And that is one of those telltale signs that what you're about to interact with is actually a web application rather than a standard web page. Because what it's doing is it's downloading a bunch of JavaScript and a bunch of code that it's now going to use to provide an application-like experience in my browser. OK, so now keep your eye on, on the top bar as I start to interact with the page. So I can open a menu. I go over to Top Charts. Um, and you'll see that there's a spinner in the middle. Um, but the page is not really being reloaded in a typical sense. So let me go back to, let's see here, go back to listen now. Um, you'll see, so see that the, the page in the bar is music slash listen. And then there's this, um, there's the pound sign. And the pound sign is actually not considered part of the URL. That's a, that's a, Greg wanted me to zoom in. Is that what you wanted? There it is. There's the pound sign. There's the pound sign. So the pound sign is actually not considered part of the URL. So from the server's perspective, I'm on the same page. Um, but look, I mean, I can I can say, okay, I'm going to um, I'm going to look for something in the fall, and I'm now doing farmers market. And you'll see that there's a spinner in the middle of the page, but the page is not being reloaded. If you watch up there, the browser uh, reload uh, signal is never being sent. And so what's happening here? So what's actually happening is, as I'm browsing around, I can go to my music library, and I can do all sorts of other things. Um, what's happening is the page is not being reloaded. Instead, what's happening is JavaScript is running in response to places where I'm clicking. Um, you know, Let's look at my thumbs up uh, playlist here. Uh, so that takes a minute to load, because it's long. So here's you know songs that I'm listening to, whatever. So the browser is. Um, responding to click events by running JavaScript, that JavaScript is communicating with the server. I mean, clearly there's data being sent back and forth, but the page, I am still on the same web page that I was when I started. I'm on music slash listen. This part, you know, again, I'm going to zoom in here. This part of the address bar is not actually being used by the server. Everything past the pound sign is, is only actually being used by JavaScript on the page. So this is a classic example of a JavaScript web application. Now again, I mean, I can start, I can start some music playing right here, you know, uh, if I want to. So you know, this is uh, something that's almost providing the same experience that I would have with an app like iTunes, except for the fact that it runs in the browser. The interface is being rendered in HTML and CSS, and the code that's powering this is JavaScript.
Um, you know, uh, so other examples of web applications, uh, Google Drive is a classic web application. I mean, this is, and you can see the browser bar spinning, but as I start to navigate here, you're going to see that it's not going to be spinning anymore. Um, and what's happening is once I'm inside this web application, the, uh, the, the changes to the display and everything are all being handled by JavaScript. Um, so the interaction pattern with the server is quite different. And this is sort of what characterizes a modern web application. And, and if you're curious about whether or not what you're using is a web application versus a more traditional website, look for a couple of things. So first of all, long startup times are a classic sign of a web application. And you may have seen that when you go to Gmail or when you go to Google Music. So if the page has to load for a while at the beginning but then is quite responsive, classic sign of, of a modern web application. The other thing to look for are changes to the URL in the browser bar. Now that's a little bit deceptive sometimes because those changes can be caused by JavaScript in certain cases. Um, the final thing is to look for cases where the browser, um, the browser is indicating to you that it's reloading the page. Because that's a sign that what's happening is I'm actually fetching a whole new web document from the web server and rendering that rather than allowing you to interact with an interactive web application.